Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and to another Esoteric Programming Languages video. Most programming languages are Turing Complete, which means that they can calculate anything that can be calculated on a machine composed of a finite state machine that modifies a tape of arbitrary symbols. This type of machine is called a Turing machine, named after early computer scientist Alan Turing. If you're in the UK right now and you have a 50 pound note nearby that was printed after 2021, his face is on the back. And if this video goes live on the right date, hopefully I'll get it out on his birthday, June 23rd. Also, just for clarification, Turing completeness does not have anything to do with interactivity or interrupts or graphics or sound or anything like that. It's just mathematical calculation. So if you're going to accuse Conway's Game of Life of not being Turing complete, your justification cannot be that Conway's Game of Life can't run Doom due to a lack of graphics capability. It's still Turing complete even though it can't do graphics. But you want to know what actually isn't Turing complete? HTML. HTML is famously not a programming language. To the point where that's a meme. It's what's known as a markup language, and HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. To demonstrate the difference between markup languages and programming languages, I'm going to show you this random HTML page that I found. Yes, I know it's hideous, I didn't make it. HTML is made up of a bunch of tags, such as the H1 tag here, that contain data. These tags change the way the page is displayed and structured. In the case of H1, it makes the text big. There are also some tags, like the image tag here, that take in outside attributes, such as the source to get the image from. Your web browser, web browser, will then take this HTML and render it as a web page. A very hideous and pompously written web page over the world's smallest achievement for a very obscure Paper Mario character. Yeah, I have no idea where this came from exactly, and I don't want to run out of space on my PC, so I'm just gonna throw it into the recycle bin. But anyway, you want to know what HTML doesn't have? Loops, variables, or any way to do any kind of calculation. HTML is only able to describe how a web page looks and is structured, and it simply lacks the ability to do anything else. In fact, modern websites can't even be made using only HTML. So that's why HTML is not a programming language. Hey you! Over there! Oh hey look everyone, it's Junior Troopa! Most recently known from his tiny cameo behind an in-universe much more famous person in a remake of a 20-year-old Nintendo game. Oh brother, this guy stinks! That was my fan page, you deleted idiot! Now I'm gonna have to write to the person who originally wrote it and tell them to make it again! Yeah, who did write it? Someone, uh, in Canada? Yeah, yeah, you wouldn't know them. Uh, okay, so I guess I can just go across the Ambassador Bridge. No, 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 you don't have to do that! Because as payback for you stupidly deleting my site, I mean, my fan page written by someone else, I'm gonna make you do an impossibly difficult programming challenge. And when you fail, I'll take a chainsaw and <laughs> into a puddle of your blood. <laughs> Have you been seeing the therapist I recommended to you? She said I was unfixable. But anyway, now for your challenge, you're gonna have to. Decide the halting problem for the language. What does it do? So yeah, you're gonna have to decide the halting problem for what does it do? What does it do? What does what does it do do? What does any of this mean? What does it do is a programming language that was created by Larry Carity in 1978 and published in Byte magazine. The idea to make a video on it was from Tyler Zanke, who also wrote the SLangs.org page about it. What Does It Do is made with the goal of teaching computer programming to complete beginners so that they can get a computer to actually do something that they tell it to do before they move on to something more difficult, like basic. What Does It Do was designed to be so easy that even a baby could learn it. Like this one! I think I should remind you, Truttle, that I am literally older than you! Yeah, but unlike you, I'm actually aging. Which uh, makes me a bit jealous, not gonna lie. But anyway, here's the Hello World program in What Does It Do? 
Each command is represented by a single letter followed by a colon. T, meaning text, prints text to the screen. What follows is the text to actually print, which is Hello World. The next line has the next command, S, which stops the program. Pretty straightforward. We can even make more text using more T commands if we want. Now for something more complicated, a simple quiz game. This asks what 2 plus 2 equals, and then asks the user for input, represented as A for accept. We then match what the user typed to a symbol. M colon 4 will check if the most recent input is a 4. What does it do remembers that for the future. If the user typed a 4, we want the program to say that he were right. Prefixing any existing command with Y means that it will only run if the most recent match was true. So if we typed a 4, the line yt colon correct runs. Similarly, nt colon incorrect try again runs if the most recent input was anything except a 4. That's because if you prefix a command with n, that runs if the most recent match was false. For this incorrect answer, we want the user to actually be allowed to try again. This is accomplished with nj colon 0. J is the jump command, and jumping to zero specifically jumps back to the most recent except. So now the quiz game only ends if you correctly answer what 2 plus 2 is. Yes, it's very easy. <sighs> wow, are you trying to insult my intelligence? Make something harder! Okay, here's a number guessing game where you must guess an integer between 1 and 9. This one contains jumps that aren't zero. Lines that can be jumped to are prefixed with asterisks. So J colon 1 will jump to the first next asterisk, J colon 2 will jump to the second next asterisk, and so on and so forth. Numbers below the target jump to the first one, which says too low. The target number itself jumps to the second asterisk, and numbers that are too high jump to the third asterisk. And of course, looping back with J colon 0 happens here too after incorrect guesses. This time, the stop is in the middle of the program when you guess correctly. Give me that! I want to see how predictable you are. It was four again! <laughs> You're too predictable! Which made it hard to predict! I hate you! Wow, you took... Almost as many tries to get it right as the maximum, but not actually reaching the maximum. It was a terrible performance that wasn't even impressively bad. I see you're very upset now, so I'll let you chill out behind this white box. So those examples show off all the features of What Does It Do, believe it or not. The most complicated program I've seen in it so far has got to be this game of Nim. Since this particular game of Nim starts with seven marbles and you go first, to win, you take two at first, and then when you're left with four, you take three, leaving the computer with one and forcing them to take. But anyway, now let's take a break from what does it do to examine the other part of the challenge, the halting problem. If you've done any programming, which you probably have if you're watching this, then you know that sometimes programs can infinitely loop. The halting problem asks, can we write an algorithm that checks if a given arbitrary program will do that? On a Turing machine, and by extension, most programming languages, this is known to be unsolvable. This can be demonstrated as follows. Assume for contradiction that we have a Boolean function called halt that takes in a function as a parameter alongside any inputs. This function solves the halting problem. Don't ask how, it just does. It just exists. Because this is a function though, we can use it as part of another function. Let's call this function that we're gonna make opposite, and it does the opposite of what halt predicts. So if the input program is going to get into a loop, opposite will halt. But if the input program is going to halt, opposite will get into an infinite loop. But what happens if we run opposite on opposite? What do we have here? Well, if opposite halts, then opposite loops. If opposite loops, then opposite halts. Two things are happening here. These statements must be true, and these statements are mutually exclusive, and also self-contradictory. None of this is allowed. So our initial assumption that the halt function even exists at all in the first place must be false. So yes, there are some problems that computers are just unable to solve. 
And fun fact, this was known since 1936. <laughs> so I win then! That's an admission of failure if I've ever heard one. <laughs> no you don't. That would only be an admission of failure, if and only if. What does it do was at least Turing complete. But it's not! A Turing machine is able to decide the halting problem for some non-Turing complete systems. Take HTML for example. The decider is, drum roll please. Return true. Yeah, you can't make an HTML page loop. Hmm. Well, that wouldn't work for what does it do then? Because unlike HTML, what does it do programs are allowed to infinitely loop. So, ha. Yes, they can, but only under very strict conditions. In order for a what does it do program to loop, it must jump backwards regardless of what matches happen. For example, if we have J0 that never gets skipped, the program can't halt. It just will always jump back to the most recent accept. Similarly, if after a match we have to run both YJ0 and NJ0, the program also doesn't halt because it's irrelevant what the input actually was. For all other cases though, what does it do program will just have to halt. And you know what this means. What does it do is not Turing complete and I solved your little challenge. A link to my what does it do halting problem solver is in the description. What? Darn it, darn it, darn it! <sighs> not only is my web page that someone else made gone forever, but I can't even get my revenge properly. Life is so unfair. Um, uh, hello? Uh, I, I found this in a recycle bin. This looks like you made it. Is it yours? What? Yes, it's mine. Gimme. I didn't write it, though. I just like having it. Okay, then. Uh, it's a little trashy looking with all the jarring colors and bad fonts. But I suppose that's just a result of it rubbing up against all the garbage in the recycle bin. Because golly, if that was someone's actual attempt at making a website, then they should definitely look into something else. <laughs> Man, if I was actually talking to the person that wrote its face, I would definitely not be so mean, but... Heh. <laughs> you didn't write it. Right. Okay. G get out of my face now. But anyway, if you want to try out what does it do yourself, a link to the solangs.org page and a Python interpreter are in the description. Thanks to Tyler Zanke for suggesting this video and being an obfuscated turtle supporter of the channel, and I'll see you next time!